to begin, I'd like you first to tell me who you are. So I have a record of who you are. Because you might forget. <laughs> you might forget. Yeah. Okay. Who you are? Who are you? Who I am? Robert. Robert Cain. Video artist. Thank you. And uh, Chris May Andrews. Also video artist. <laughs> <laughs> Not only. Well, that'll do. So it, mm. we are uh, in the process of this interview, which comes after the end of a day or a day and a half's work and thought about where we as artists stand in relation to the changing digital paradigm. Um, so I'm interested in creating these interviews, in trying to find, try, I'm trying to make a, land, a topography of not just high definition imaging, but the digital paradigm and what that's bringing on. For instance, at this very moment, uh, Peter Jackson is shooting The Hobbit, and he's shooting it in 3D, but he's shooting at 48 frames a second. I don't know if you knew this, but he's changing the frame rate. So there's an issue where enhanced com computational abilities have uh, begun to define the digital, so that in fact, all of the parameters that we used to work upon have changed. So I'm interested in examining what parameters we used to work to and what this change is making us think about changing in ourselves. So in relation to that, I mean, can you tell me, Chris, what you used to look for when making artwork in an image or in an installation? What were you seeking? Mm. Well, I I kind of fell in love with the, the the electronic image, and I wanted to know what was particular about it. You know, there was something I liked, a quality. It's a bit like picking up a bit of wood and liking the the grain and the color and the smell and all of those things. So, I remember thinking, well, I really like the electronic image. I prefer it to film, and I tried to find out what was particular about it. And it was in the days when that was the thing that one did, anyway, as an artist, in a sense. You know, you were if you're working in bronze, you tried to find out what was particular about bronze. So it started with that. It started with an attraction to the backlit electronic, you know, backlit display electronic image, quite low resolution, and that was part of its attraction because it was tactile for me, rather than uh, visual, it was kind of haptic, you know? It was about that relationship between touching and seeing. And, and so for me, as that receded as, a, as an issue, um, I started to struggle more. I started to wonder exactly what it was that I had an allegiance to. Oh, okay. Was Robert, was the, what, were you, what were you looking for? Was it similar to Chris? Um, perhaps. In a way, hmm. I don't know if I have to speak French or English. You, speak you French. Feel, you feel free to speak in any language you want <laughs> so, to speak in hmm. to answer. C'est plus facile pour moi de de dire en français euh, les raisons pour lesquelles euh, je, je me suis servi d'image électronique. Euh, elle m'a attiré parce qu'elle était manipulable en direct. Hmm. La première chose, c'est la possibilité de voir l'effet que l'on fait immédiatement sur l'image. Mm. La qualité, je n'y ai pas pensé. La, 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 la qualité de l'image, pour moi, euh, elle était... Il était possible, même au début, quand je travaillais en analogique, de changer et d'étalonner les couleurs, mm. c'est-à-dire de baisser le niveau de noir, d'avoir le contraste le meilleur et de faire que les couleurs soit comme de la peinture. C'est retrouver la qualité de la densité d'une couleur picturale, d'une peinture. Mm. Euh, mais actuellement, effectivement, on ne travaille plus en analogique, on est en numérique, digital. Et ce qui change, c'est les paramètres qui permettent de toucher à l'image et d'améliorer ou de détériorer de faire l'inverse, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a une attitude dans les, avec les artistes qui travaillent expérimentalement de ne pas chercher la meilleure qualité technique d'une image, mais 
la meilleure, le meilleur rendu psychologique de l'image. La façon psychologique. 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 Oh, so it means. Uh, uh, you know, got in. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Psychodramatic. <laughs> I thought you said pixelogique. Ah, psychologique. Which, which wow. interesting, <laughs> interesting concept. L'idée du, du pixel est de, de travailler sur une partie de l'image mm. euh, change aussi l'attitude d'imagination mm. de la transformation de l'image. Mm. Mais finalement, plus on avance dans le métier, parce qu'on est artiste, on fait un métier. It's like a job for me. Ça veut oh. dire je, je, oh, wow, wow. je travaille parce que je ne sais pas faire autre chose. So there's, yes. nothing in, so there's nothing in film in, for either of you. Nothing was drawing you there. I just want to be clear le, about Le cinéma, mm -hmm. le film, alors l'utilisation... Je, je suis formé par le cinéma. Ça signifie que mes références sont cinématographiques. Et lorsque je travaille mon image, je pense quelquefois à l'image d'un film de Hitchcock, par exemple, pour mm. le, la qualité du noir. Mm. Et euh, pour, pour, euh, si je pense à, à, au film de Kubrick, 2001, l'Odyssée, je me souviens des solarisations que j'ai découvertes au même moment où je faisais moi-même la découverte de la solarisation d'une image et de sa transformation par la couleur. Ça veut dire que le cinéma m'a beaucoup influencé et que l'électronique ne m'écarte pas du cinéma, mais j'essaie de retrouver une adéquation d'image cinématographique dans mon travail d'image électronique. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about film and its relationship to what we, what we did, I think, what we both did differently from each other, is, yes, it's part of the heritage in a sense, but a lot of experience of film for me was on television. In fact, I remember hearing Douglas Gordon talking about this and said that his first experience of Psycho was not in the cinema, but watching it on television. And, and there is a sense in which I remember seeing Citizen Kane um, on television and then later on seeing it as a, as a film. Although I knew it was film, mm -hmm. it was still encountered for me. And, and, and I should also say, because I agree with what Robert said about the fact that there was this instant um, adjustability of the video. You could manipulate the image and so on, that you could play it back, all of that. That was also part of the quality. But there was also the fact that the television was a domestic object and that you lived with the images in a way that you didn't in cinema. In cinema, you went into a darkened space and you were transported somewhere. Whereas video and television was in your living room, it was intimate, it was shared um, with, with others, the family, mm -hmm. your loved ones, etc. And so there was this sort of shared relationship to the image, which I didn't feel I had with cinema. Mm -hmm. I didn't aspire to cinema, even though it inspired me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what, would you, what would you both or individually feel about Baudrillard's analysis that the image has no meaning because of its ubiquity, because of its lack of specialness, because it's presented in a domestic environment, mm. say. Do you want to say something? No, no. I, I don't think I agree. Well, I, I, maybe I like it, that, it, that it, it, it's still special because it's coming from somewhere other and, and, and coming into your own space. And that's like radio, it's magic. It's absolutely, super special is even more mysterious than going to the cinema where the projector was behind you clattering away um, you know that my first experience of cinema was often in a quite small cinema where there was the projector was at the back mm -hmm. and the guy was messing with the s spools much more magic to have something appear on a screen in your home you knew not from where so I would say the reverse huh. okay. <laughs> uh, have an opinion on that? Don't no. forget Baudrillard yeah. No, no. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in this topo in this landscape, this topography, I'm kind of interested in that because we've got to walk forward mm. towards the other stuff. Because what you're actually talking about in some way is analog video. It's mm. an analog domain. And then we come up to the digital domain. So I'm kind of interested in how you 
uh, uh, negotiated with the incoming digital technologies. Not where we are right now, because that's a little step further on, but the mm -hmm. original moment of digital technologies. How did, you, how did you embrace, or how did you deal with this? Depuis le début de, du travail que je fais sur l'image et avec l'image électronique, je travaille avec des techniciens. Ça signifie que ce n'est pas moi qui vais vers le digital, mais le digital me vient dans les bras. C'est le digital avec lequel je dois travailler et que les techniciens me proposent. Moi, je n'ai pas cherché le, le digital pour faire une image euh, peut-être plus piquée, plus, plus exceptionnelle. Je suis... Je, je, je travaille avec les machines que l'on me propose et les moyens tec technologiques de mon époque. Et je n'ai pas de difficulté. Ça ne change pas ce que j'ai à l'intérieur de moi. Ça veut dire qu'il n'y a pas d'interférence sur le contenu de ce que je dois imaginer. Ça, c'est une chose. C'est vite dit parce que peut-être c'est ce n'est pas vrai. Si on me montre ce que peut faire une caméra digitale, euh, notamment par exemple des nouvelles caméras qui font des ralentis exceptionnels. Ce que je, avant, j'utilisais la caméra euh, grande vitesse, ça veut dire 200 images secondes. Maintenant, il y a des caméras numériques qui permettent de faire 1000 images secondes euh, et, et de restituer une qualité fantastique d'image. De, de, ce genre de, de caméra m'intéresse pour faire certaines prises de vue. Donc je peux être attiré par un, une qualité, une capacité euh, que propose le numérique euh, et, et donc orienter la pensée de mon travail en fonction de la machine que je vais utiliser. Mmh. Voilà ce que... Donc il y a des interférences évidentes. Do you want to... Um... Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was sort of impatient, actually. It's interesting because um, the digital... I remember I um, had a residency where I was the digital artist in residence or something, and it was my first encounter, and it was Apple Mac-based, and I wanted to be able to get my hands on the signal because um, what analog didn't allow you to do, analog video didn't allow you to do, was it wasn't... Um, you couldn't handle the material. You could adjust the knobs to change the color and so on, but you, you were somehow distanced from the image. You couldn't break it apart. You couldn't take the frame apart. Whereas the potential for the digital, once you'd got the picture, the moving image signal into the computer was you could begin to do that. So I was impatient for that. And it seemed to take a long time before the machines that I could afford or get access to would allow me to do what we've been doing today. So my introduction to fiddling was the video Kalos, which was, um, you know, a kind of analog computer that allowed contrast, brightness, mm -hmm. color to be adjusted. But I wanted to take apart the picture in a way that took a while before I could do it. So I was impatient with the digital to allow me to get to that point. Are you... Um either of you or both of you, happy with the amount of di uh, disintegration you can affect in a digital image? Disintegration? Well, I mean that um, if you took an analogue image and you pushed it too far, it disintegrated oh, I see. before your eyes. Yes. With a digital image, Difficult it doesn't to do it. disintegrate in an interesting way, does oh, it? Oh, I see. Or does it? Je disais la désintégration de l'image mm. en digital. The corruption, I'm talking about... When you go from one generation to the next, does it breaks down, you mean, like the signal? One of the pleasures of making art in any material is you get the material to do what it's not been designed to do. Yes. They're like the greatest pleasure yes. in, in many materials. Mm -hmm. With analog... It was possible. It had a... Exactly. And the, the Vesorkas yes. are busy ripping and tearing mm -hmm. the analog but with the digital image it seems almost that there's not that capacity how, how do you feel about that c'est difficile effectivement de transformer mais dans ces cas là il faut pré prévoir au tournage c'est à dire lorsque on tourne les images on prévoit 
la qualité euh, que l'on souhaite, ou alors on dégrade l'image après coup, je, si, j si ça va dans, dans le sens de la question, je ne sais pas. I mean, I mean, it has other virtues, so you know you lose something that the analog gives ah, you. Les histoires de vertu, mm? oui. Yeah, and and you gain something. For example, I suppose the real strength of the digital is that you can make the image manifest in so many more ways. You know, once you've got the thing in the computer and you start to change it, then you have to think about what do I do with this image or this sequence or this thing that I've made within the bowels of the computer. How do I make it manifest in the world? And that's what the digital has given us, a multiplicity of possible forms once you've, once you've messed with it in the computer. Do you, do you mean, by forms, you mean outcomes? I mean outputs. Do you comprehend it? Oui, oui. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And do you feel this? Does this... Is the, I mean, we, I'm going to be more pushy here. Because okay. you are... Um, uh, in in some ways very enamored of the image yes mm -hmm. the video image do you have you found yourself wanting to go to print these images to make metal casts of these image have you been has the digital made you want to come away from what you used to do in no. any way no no je crois pas hmm. well i would say no. No yeah, finish. Yeah, euh, non, par exemple, ce que je trouve intéressant avec l'image digitale, c'est la possibilité de choisir un extrait, un, une partie d'image. Et de, de, cette partie d'image reste aussi bonne que la totalité. C'est-à-dire qu'on peut faire des déplacements. Euh, et je cherche du matériau pour mon travail. Je, je joue par association, par collage, et évidemment... So this is a ah, oui, c'est une, une, une facilité si je, je me fais bien comprendre par le technicien avec qui je travaille. Ça veut dire qu'il faut qu'il y ait une complicité entre le monteur, le technicien qui travaille mon image, et ce que je souhaite euh, découvrir. C'est la capacité de, de compréhension de celui avec qui je travaille et qui peut appliquer à, au système digital. C'est-à-dire que je peux demander plus de choses que je ne le faisais lorsque je travaillais en analogique. So let me understand this. So there's greater freedom and yet when the digital came... Une grande liberté, c'est une des possibilités supplémentaires euh, d'ajuster des ou, ou de, de découvrir dans des images mal tournées des choses intéressantes par exemple ce qui mais c'est so pas so as an artist an artist touching materials so with the advent of the digital the ability to touch it became even more distant mm -hmm. because there was a technician involved and yes. yet there is greater freedom Yes, no way. It's a paradox. Yeah, I guess there are lots of paradoxes because another one is the number of ways in which we can make a moving image available. You know, that there are more challenges. In the old day, it was in the old days, it was on the television screen, and then suddenly it became possible to project it, and so it becomes more like cinema. But now there are things like putting it on a mobile phone or putting it on the internet. Um, or embedding it into some, some chip and making it available continuously on a little screen stuck on the wall somewhere, and any number of other things that we might investigate, which have opened up a question for artists who make moving images about what we do with them and what they're for and how they might be experienced. You know, for example, you can hold a moving image in your hand now in a way that you used to only be able to hold a photograph or an icon. You can take it with you. Mm -hmm. I can sit on the train and watch Citizen Kane. Um, you know, and so the back catalogue that comes with that, we can watch. I can show a student, you know, back to back, a piece by Robert, followed by uh, Un Chien de Lou. Uh, you know, we can plunder the back catalogue of the history of the cinema. Yes. Yeah. Um, right? And all of that, I can, they can take it home and watch it and they can own it in a way that it, 
it, that's that's liberating the, the visual image and it's making artist moving image part of a larger um, lexicon uh, I guess uh, you know is, is it uh, diminishing the artist in any way why why I mean you know it's a bit like if we write then we can write anything from menus to 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 to, to epic poems um, you know with the same facility of moving words around um, and so as, a, as, a, as an artist working with moving image we're one of many different types of people that might work with moving images. Is it harder to, uh, to uh, discover the essence of your intention within the digital image than prior forms? For example, je ne réponds pas à cette question mais on, on voit la possibilité dans le cinéma de l'utilisation des effets numériques. Dans Le Seigneur des Anneaux, les, les effets sont fantastiques. Il y a des, il y a des choses inimaginables. Méliès, en son temps, a inventé des choses magnifiques. Mais là, on va au-delà de, de l'imagination. Et donc... C'est simplement une application des possibilités du numérique pour quelqu'un qui réalise un très beau film. Ce que je veux dire, c'est que la haute définition ou le digital, le numérique, peut aider à la réalisation de certains effets, mais n'apporte pas le contenu, c'est l'auteur qui va réussir à, à faire un chef-d'œuvre avec le numérique ou sans le numérique. Ça veut dire ça ne change, on ne change pas de qualité parce que la technique est, est meilleure. Mmh. You... On le sait, c'est basique. J'invente, tout le monde le sait, mais il faut le redire. If we, if we look at other media, it's sometimes useful. I don't know whether this is a valuable insight or not, but um, the other day I was being shown a manuscript from a, um, a novel that was handwritten in the days when there was no typewriter and the mm -hmm. novelist had to write by hand. And what um, they were able to do was see how the author had crossed things out, had changed things, had annotated. Um, and uh, Chinsi and I were there, and she said to me, "Oh, yes. Well, because now everything is is written digitally, and so we've lost the ability to see the author's original intention and how he or she changed the text as it went along. All of that's lost. What we don't have, say, when we finish editing our session and we have a piece of work, is all of the earlier versions of it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether um, there's an equivalent in filmmaking. You know." Maybe maybe that's not quite the same problem, but it does seem as if there's always going to be um, when a new medium comes along, it doesn't replace previous mediums. It comes along to sit alongside them, um, but there's always something that gets lost and something that gets gained. Um, w with the, with with the digital, um, we embrace a new set of possibilities and we look back and try and draw from the previous things too. So there's heritage, um, and there's there's, you know, things being replaced and, 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 and not the same, things lost. So the question about what we, what we gain from the digital is, is immense and we're still trying to find out what it is. But we've also lost a few things along the way inevitably. I think. Has it brought to a head the problem, no, the matter of art? Hmm. Do you understand, Robert? No. Um, hmm. The, the, it's back to the Italians. Okay. Uh, few are called, but many answer. <laughs> In the digital realm, the digitizer is king, and everybody is. I'm quoting Ralph and Eigen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the kingdom of consumption and consumer is king. But mm -hmm. the bo bottom line is, the access to the means of production is ubiquitous. And uh, that was behind my question earlier about finding the artist finding the essence of that which is artful. Um, is is this is this bringing to a head? Is is when uh, you you have a an illness that's growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So has the digital, is the digital bringing us to the point where the illness is going to disclose its nature? Is there an illness? <laughs> Make sense? Well, no, I, no, I think no. I don't know. I mean, you, 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 the pencil, you know, just because the pencil is available, it's ubiquitous, doesn't mean there are, there's more people who can draw well. Um, so making the technology available and, and, and easier to handle and so mm -hmm. on will give people the opportunity, but it won't necessarily make for, for better moving image work. But you yourself, I mean, Robert, you mm -hmm. yourself have said it's hard, hard to be heard because of the amount of voices... The amount of voices calling. So, is it any? Is it, what the issue? It would seem is that there's the matter of art. It's the the phrase meaning mm -hmm. the centrality of the the issue of art. Uh, does that not become lost in amongst this? Uh, to become lost of. Mm. Yeah, lost to. It's hard to see. Was there ever was the, is there ever one matter? I mean, it doesn't isn't the nature of art changing all the yeah. time anyway? You know, it was different. Okay, you're not you're not rising to my bait. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 it's <laughs> difficult. No, it's no, all right. The no, question no, is, l'essence. You are looking for an essence of art. The, I'm, I'm the, looking the, for this. this if this. it's possible, avec ces nouvelles technologies, si on approche d'une manière plus plus rapide ou plus évidente à l'essence même de, de ce qu'on veut exprimer ou de, de notre art mm. est-ce que c'est possible moi je ne vois pas l'influence sur le je crois qu'il faut être soi-même technicien et amoureux de la technique pour se servir de la machine et arriver encore plus loin si je travaille avec quelqu'un qui aime la machine, il va m'aider à aller le plus loin possible. You understand me? Yeah, I, I'm, what I'm struggling here to do is <laughs> drag you to parce the que... edge of the precipice. <laughs> look down over and go. <laughs> look down. I mean, I've been in the position that I'm in, I've been researching incoming technologies. Uh, in 1989, in a laboratory in Eindhoven, I saw my first 3D. I mean, it was years ago, mm -hmm. years ago. And what I'm seeing now, I am seeing technologies that are lined up to be made available. They're to be made available at the same time to the populace as they are to the artists, to the early adopters, to everybody, to the, to the researchers. They come, the researcher will, and the artist and the general populace will receive technological advance at the same moment. So the investigation of art seems to me, this is, this is where I'm trying to pose a question, uh, it is making it more of a problem to find that which matters, whatever that is. And I'm just wondering if this experience we've had for the last day or so is making you think around this Visiblement, pour moi, non. Mm. Visibly, pour for you, non. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, it takes a while for things to fall through in the back of my head or wherever it is they work. You know, I have to take away an experience and live with the result of that experience for some time. So the jury's out, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not sure what art has got to do with technology, really. Oh, okay. um, you know, we're artists who happen to use technology. That was why I was... Yeah, yeah. you know, we, all three of us are artists who've decided that we kind of feel interested enough in what technology offers us. Um, but I think whatever the business of art is, is shifting all the time anyway. And whether or not we get hold of the latest bit of kit to do something with is kind of neither here nor there, because I don't think it's centered. Technology is only useful in terms of what it uncovers about what it is to be human, I guess. You know? Mais pour uh, les Vazulka, mm. par exemple, la technologie était le fondement de leur recherche. Yeah. Mm. C'est-à-dire qu'ils ont créé des œuvres influencés par la technologie et par leur découverte, c'était des artistes scientifiques. Mm. Mm. 
Do, yeah. do you find yourself looking to more classical values with the more advanced technology that comes as an artist? It's not classic, but sur des valeurs euh, liées à l'acte de création. Plus que... Pourtant, la recherche me, me passionne. Je pense que c'est... C'est la... On dit, je trouve d'abord, je cherche ensuite. Ça, c'est Picasso qui dit ça. Et Pierre Schaeffer l'a répété. Je trouve d'abord... I find first I find yeah. and then I look f I je cherche you look for, for I what find the meaning behind it and I and then if I have found something mm -hmm. I can look something from this perspective to okay. yes Right. Faire de yeah. la recherche. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So c'est la c'est l'idée de de la trouvaille. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's how I artists work, mean. isn't it? Generally, I mean, you know, I must be lots of different ways to be an artist. C'est pour ça que avec le la technique haute définition, on peut découvrir des choses que les techniciens n'ont pas imaginé. C'est-à-dire mm. euh, se servir de la machine au contraire de ce qu'elle peut donner. Mm. Yes, yeah, sometimes there are other things that the machine is 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 capable of or, or get, makes possible oui, that have nothing to do with la détourner de ce which is the point about the material revealing something about itself as voilà. it degrades. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Right, it's one edge of it, okay. isn't it? Yeah. So there's no fear about what's coming next. Uh, one of my earliest teachers, a um, guy called Ken McMullen, who's a filmmaker, mm -hmm. said to me that every medium, whatever it is, whether it's a piece of wood or it's it's digital technology every medium has a grain and the artist's job is to find the grain and to work with it mm -hmm. um the, and, you know you know yourself with an analogy with wood again for me you sand against the grain you fuck the wood up yeah and in a sense i think there's something some truth in that somewhere that you need to as an artist whatever material you you love that you find gives you this mm -hmm. this, this this response you must look f to find how to how to understand it how to work with it mm -hmm. and allow it to give you something you bring something to it it brings something to you and it's a kind of relationship that you mm -hmm. must find and when you find it you make interesting work and if you don't you it, you make shit okay Et, par exemple nam junpek mm -hmm. comment il a évolué dans dans l'histoire de, des techniques mm. How, how would you evaluate the, 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 the il work? Il a évolué, of... il a évolué. Comment il a changé son travail à cause des technologies Est-ce qu'il a transformé son travail yeah. du, de l'analogique au digital Parce qu'à la fin, il, il travaillait aussi des images digitales. Yes, à right. Yes, I suppose so. I mean, he was somebody who, who kind of moved with the technology, mm -hmm. wasn't he? You know, from music okay. to oui, performance. From from analog to digital. And he so embraced... This is, a, this is a Zen response to... A Zen response. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, with, with a candle. With a candle and a television. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or fish television. swimming in the, in, the, yes. in, the, in, the, in the television set. Yeah, but I mean, Pike was interested in things like um, satellite transmissions and um, international mm -hmm. uh, broadcasting Connection. links and yeah. so on. You know, he did embrace very, very large scale yes. um, geographical you know, distance things and so on mm -hmm. like that as part of seeing what the potential of the technology could mm -hmm. give him. You know, he, I right. guess he was open minded. And, and you Absolutely. do need that as well, don't you? You need, do need to be able to sort of, I don't know, look at it and see what it might make possible. Mm -hmm. mm. But that's the large scale works, isn't it? I mean, there are also very intimate things like the magnet on top of the TV set, you know, very tactile, very immediate, funny, witty, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, playful. Mm? But this is an artistic attitude. Mm. Better than to, to look a film on TV set. Yes. Because you talk about the, the beginning, mm -hmm. le, le début de, de, de regarder le cinéma à la mm. télévision. Mm. Well, I was talking about mais, the experience of the image. Absolutely, bien yeah. sûr, l'expérience de l'image. Mm. Mais effectivement, de transformer, mm. de faire évoluer mm. euh, le, le, pro, le, 
la, la boîte à images. C'est, c'est right, but if you remember, that came out of uh, going from the idea of prepared prepared pianos to prepared TV sets. Mm-hmm. You know, he made the jump from what Cage was doing with pianos yes. to starting to mess around with the electronics in the television set. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very much a hands-on, let's get into the box and break it and see what it gives us if we start to play with it, mm. with the guts of the television, with C'est the signal. It's political also. Mm. Yes, it was also political. Yes, I guess that's right, because it was about, you know, kind of taking control of the medium. So, si l'ère numérique, le temps de, l'air, de, de l'âge numérique mm. permet de toucher à l'histoire politique, ça sera bien. So, okay. Yeah. One, one last attempt. <laughs> Is something on fire? It smells it nice. Maybe yes, a it's nice. Fire oh, okay. Mm. Sorry. No, no, no. It's just nice smell. Right. Mm. Um, in the early days of any medium, there are many strategies, juxtaposition. Mm. There, are many, there are many corners. There are, there are magnets to be put on top of uh, cathode ray tubes. But in the latter days of a medium, in the later days, maybe these are the mid days of the medium, um, there are less effective strategies available. So it w- might seem, do you, do you, would you agree, or do you think this is the case, that you need subtler strategies to tease out the essence of what you're trying to do? Less strategy. More, more elegant or more finessed, uh, more subtle strategies. You can't put the magnet on top of the box anymore. Well, no, you can. It always actually. looks easier to do what somebody would already figured out what to do, you know, 40, 50 years ago or something. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to live in the present and be as inventive and innovative of, as Pike was with the television set. There are other problems. There are other issues, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So it's no good being nostalgic about what it must have been like to be a... And, you know, an avant-garde filmmaker then, or whatever he was, performance artist, whatever. So we have new situations that the world has changed technologically, politically. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're at the, 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 the collapse of, 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 of um, um, capitalism. We're at the sort of brink of something. The, the, uh, the West is in, the, in, in, in some kind of descendant position in, rela- in relation to the East. That's all new. In our lifetimes, it's changed profoundly, the political situation, even the balance in the world. So what that does to us as artists, mm-hmm. or what position that puts us in, who can say? Par exemple, je suis allé en Chine mm. en, en 1987, 87. And, et j'ai pu montrer mon travail dans une école d'art de Chine. Mm. Ils ne connaissaient pas l'art vidéo. Il n'avait jamais vu. 87, 90. Yeah, it was about 97. Non, 87. Yeah, no, I'm saying, but it wasn't until about 97, the first Chinese video. Et donc, euh, ce qui est extraordinaire, c'est que maintenant, les artistes chinois produisent des œuvres numériques mm. magnifiques. Mm. Ça veut dire, ça veut dire que ils ont sauté l'étape de l'analogique. Ils sont passés directement au numérique. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, in Africa, they didn't bother with, with telephones, they went straight to mobile phones. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Et ça, c'est, ça signifie que la technologie peut arriver et mm. être euh, porteuse de, de ce qu'on porte en soi. Mm. Elle peut transmettre exactement euh, le, les qualités que l'on a en soi, mais elle ne donne pas plus. I'm, 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 I'm just wondering whether to have one last go. Another one last go. <laughs> it's going to run out of tape. But I shan't. What I should do instead is um, say, given all of that, is there anything uh, you'd like to say about the fact that as technology is uh, improving, your access to higher frame rates, higher resolution, bigger screens, all of this stuff, how is that affecting? How is it affecting you? Ce qui, ce qui m'affecte, 
c'est qu'il y a les technologies les plus performantes. Mais si on n'a pas le budget, si on n'a pas l'argent pour utiliser ces techniques, on ne peut rien faire. Je voudrais faire une, une installation vidéo et j'ai besoin de projecteurs 10 000 lumens, mais qui existent sur le marché, mais je ne peux pas l'utiliser. Donc je suis obligé de changer mon, mon idée et trouver une autre forme euh, avec des technologies plus, plus simples pour réaliser mon travail. Et c'est un problème. C'est difficile de savoir qu'il y a un lieu où on peut faire euh, un effet extraordinaire, mais de ne pas avoir les moyens de le faire, il faut... Mm. I'm, I, I don't disagree with what Robert said. It's a similar experience, but I mean, I'm going to have a more facetious answer as well. I saw this sort of sticker on somebody's four by four. On the top, it just said something like, I never grew up, my toys just got bigger. Um, and it mm. seems to me, you know, that's what it's like. There's, we can do more with less. And so there's an advantage, you know. So, but there is a sense in which every so often we do get to put our hands on something which we just couldn't have dreamed of maybe being able to use only a few years ago. So there is a sense in which, you know, the toys get bigger. Well, thank toy. you very much. <laughs> <Toy>. <laughs> thank you.